a long time ago, and it still stands true, even though it may not be practiced the way it should be. A man that, that marries a woman in the church, he cannot make eyes at another woman for as long as he lives. He can't, well, let me forget it. Because you ain't going to listen to me no more. Say, say, Pastor, we're not going to listen to you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to help if you listen to me. See, what folk call marriage today is sex. That's what they call marriage. So they feel like if they're having sex, they're nearly married. The other almost married. Y'all been close to that word, almost? Well, that's like being almost pregnant. <laughs> Are you listening? All right, now. Sex. I want you, we're going to take care of this. We, we're getting the spirituality of it. Is a byproduct of pure love or love. It is not love itself. It's a byproduct of love. Somebody's listening. Most people that don't follow God's word are looking for love. When they're outside of God, they want someone to have compassion and love and caring about them. So they allow themselves to be in a sexual relationship with someone other than a husband and wife. A husband and wife, if they get married and they don't love one another, the relationship will dry up. You know what dry is? I see it. Um, sometimes if you, I'm going to take my time, see if we can get this thing the way God wanted to come down. You can marry and not have the proper love for someone. And if you're blessed, God will take you back to where there's almost no love and begin to build it again with love. Did I lose you? He'll take you back. He'll remove sex out of your marriage. Remove a lot of talking out of your marriage. Move everything out. Take it right back to day one and say, now let's start again. Let's let this be the main thing. First thing, learn to love one another and get along with each other. That'd be number one. See, that's number one. Love one another and get along with one another. No sense in having sex and y'all don't get along. Am I making any sense to you? Because it gives the impression that you are getting along. When you're not getting along. You understand what I'm saying? It gives the impression that you're in love when maybe you're not in love. So you go back to the start. If you're blessed... Got to take it back and say, let's start again. You need to look at the woman and see her good points. She need to look at you and see your good points. You need to start bearing one another's bad points and begin to bond first. You got to learn how to live with each other before you have sex with one another. And I'm not talking about shacking up. I'm talking about married folk. We know that God has not given us the power over our own bodies. But if we want to yield ourselves up to someone, we have to be satisfied that they want what we're giving. Now, you're not listening to me. Is anybody listening? Am I right? 
You have to be satisfied with the knowledge that the individual, man or woman, want what you're giving, or you're not going to be satisfied giving it. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Instead of uh, breeding love, it breeds mistrust, bitterness, criticism. Am I right or wrong? Because the individual cannot get out of that relationship what they want. Well, I'm sort of getting there. It says, render, verse number three says, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise to the wife unto the husband. Now these are cases, all these cases that Paul is discussing in the Corinthian church has to do with the other case that we talked about. Remember another case? And the man with his father's wife. So everything that you're reading has to do with him trying to straighten out that matter. Remember we're getting the spirit of the message? And he's trying to straighten out that matter and be define for them what should be going on. Now you shouldn't marry anybody you don't love. Don't let somebody tell you you're going to grow to love them. Because it can go either way. There's no guarantees that you're going to grow to love anybody. Some folk you can grow to not love. <laughs> Amen. Okay. What he's saying here that if there be a cause for division, now you can look at it the way it's supposed to be looked at. Don't let it be these things. If there be a cause for division, don't let it be that your wife want to be with you and you don't want to be with her, or you want to be with her and she doesn't want to be with you. Don't let that be the cause. Anybody follow me? You say, now, even if love is not at the level it should be, don't let that be the cause. Because marriage is legal and the bed is undefiled. I'm trying to teach you spiritually what God is looking at. When he looks down from heaven at a relationship that's in trouble, he has to measure why it's in trouble and what are the causes of that trouble. And from there, he hand, and mets out judgment, hands out and mets out judgment and grace. Are you following? Now, if you're not married to anybody and you had a relationship with them and you saved now, that relationship is over. Can y'all say over? over. Can y'all say over? over? Oh, okay. We want it to be over. Over. You can't have a man hanging on or a woman hanging on and be saved. You're just dreaming. Why wait the judgment to find out you're wrong? Well, let's get to it. It says, defraud not one another except for content for, consent for a time. That you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Well, we don't have to worry about that with y'all, do we? Fasting and prayer. We can go right on by that, right? Oh, y'all y'all have y'all started fasting and praying? Oh, okay. Then we can include that. <laughs> Since you started fasting and praying and all. <laughs> this is don't lay with your husband don't lay with your wife while she on a fast don't defraud them you tell your husband you tell your wife that you're fasting don't fool them so you can give yourself wholly to God without compromising yourself by having sex with your husband or with your wife so you, you, you tell them I, I'm fasting and they're supposed to have enough grace if they're saved, to leave you alone. Now that doesn't mean an incidental patting or incidental kiss or something like that. That doesn't mean that. Sex is what? Sex is what? Okay, let's get that straight in our minds. We didn't made everything sex. Sex is what? We know what sex is. 
Amen. We adults here. Paul said, I speak this by permission, not by command. I'm going to just tell you because I know this to be true. Not that God had to tell me uh, that it's true. And I, your commentator also might have covered verse 7. If you, if you read, it says that uh, he commented. I don't know what he said, but he said the gift means, I don't know whether he said it. I know what it means, but I don't know what he knew what it means that uh, if you have the power to withstand from having sex, to abstain from sex, but that's not married folk. You know, married folks supposed to have no power to abstain from sex. Now, if God give you the power of celibacy, you should have never got married. Am I right or wrong? You just don't have no business trying to abstain from sex, and you got a wife, and you got a husband over there. And tell, you know, tell him that the Lord have called you to, to abstain. <laughs> he going to tell you this have called you for your breathing to be slowed down. <laughs> That's not the way it works, right? No, you don't wait till you get married to hear a calling. There's a lot of false callings going out here. So we, you don't wait. For these things to happen. And, and you think that you're not supposed to respond because you feel like God is telling you not to respond. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. Only on the special conditions will God tell you not to respond to your mate. Only under special conditions. We, One of them is the season that she's in. That's a no-no. If she's in season, you don't respond, you leave her alone. Also, a day after or a day before. Silence. She knows when she's about to be in season. So a day before or a day after, you leave her alone. And through her season. Everybody's listening, right? And if you are a woman that no longer has seasons by medically or time diversity, in other words, operation or by age, it's still the same. Still the same. A day she has a season even though she doesn't have the season of passing but she has a season that she she knows would be her season no no you may cause seepage and if you call seepage you have sin you don't know what I'm talking about do how many know what I'm talking about if you cause her to bleed you have seen. Anybody listening? Okay. So we're moving right along. Moving right along. It's an all grown up class here. See, I didn't think y'all could teach this lesson. See, see, this is eternal. When he talks about husbands and wives, there's no such thing as divorce after marriage in the church. Unless, unless you're caught in fornication. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you time for the swallow. Mm -hmm. Did you get a swallow? Now you, you I said caught. I didn't say declared. <laughs> I said caught. <laughs> you got to get caught in fornication for the, to be a legitimate reason for divorce. Unless the man, I, would, I listen carefully, unless the man or the woman declare they don't want you anymore to the pastor. If they come to my office and say they don't want you anymore, then you're free to be divorced and remarry without sanctions. They don't want you no more. Is that reason enough? 
That's reason enough to me. <laughs> Don't want me no more. We're hanging around. <laughs> you want me to say it again? Did you understand what I said? You want me to say it again? Okay, you understand? All right. If she's saying this or he's saying this out of adulation, anger, and other things without having the clearness of mind, it does not count. It must be in the clearness of thought. Folks say stuff when they're mad, they don't mean it. They just mean it for the moment. You know I'm telling the truth. It's a bad habit. We got to get away from it. But we say stuff we don't even know we shouldn't say when we're angry. I wish I had never married you. We say that kind of stuff. I wish I had never even met you. They get mad at us. I wish you were never born. <laughs> That's when they really mad. Well, they go back as far as they can when they're married. <laughs> and they don't really mean it. They don't really mean it. But if, I want to, see, a marriage relationship in the church is eternal. You are slated to be friends even after death. Close friends in the city called heaven. Talking friends. There won't be relationships, but you'll be close friends even after death in the city called heaven. This will be your friend. You won't know nobody else. No, you ain't going to meet this fine sister angel. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. Okay, let's get our heads on straight. See, marriage goes beyond this earth. You're not going to be married in heaven. But you're going to be close friends. But you thought you were going to be enemies? No matter what happens, that person is going to know more about you than anybody else walking around heaven other than Jesus. You're going to see him. Hey. So, 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 so. You're going to be close. It, no, it won't be any members of marriage, period. What, what good would that be? But see, marriage is connected to all the acts of marriage. If you're thinking about marriage, you have to think about everything that goes with marriage. <laughs> Hello. When you think about marriage, you're thinking about everything that goes into being married. She fine, she sexy, she this and she that. Have nothing to do with being married. Well, I guess it's my my microphone. I don't I don't hear many amens. You just you don't hear many. I don't even hear you saying amen too much. <laughs> so if I'd have known it, I'd have got rid of that two the second week. <laughs> You need to understand what he's saying. We're called to have relationships. You're called to be married. We're going to pray for folks today that are not married so they can get a husband. Save for So they can get a saved husband. Now, the difference, see, a saved relationship goes beyond the grave. You don't understand that, do you? Who else are you going to know in heaven like your husband or your wife? you gonna know like that and they're not gonna be if your wife go before you she's not gonna be retracing your steps and if you go before her you, 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 you are you following me there won't be no questions about your past in heaven your friends they're gonna be yeah now that we're in heaven i like to ask you this <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not, not going to be any of that going on. I said, friends, no remembrance of marriage. God's going to take the, the, the mind away of the remembrance of marriage, but not the remembrance of your friendship. Okay? He's going to remove the bad stuff. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just kidding. <laughs> marriage is good. In some lives. Okay? So I say it again. If there's no love, there's no relationship. There's a false marriage. Now love is not sex. Love is responsibility. A woman that marries a man looks for him to take care of business. A man that marries a woman looks for her to take care of business. They have a responsibility to each other to take care of business. Amen. Sometimes we jump the gun and we already have a few things in the nest before we get married. But all the fish caught in your net is yours. Let me explain that. Or did you catch on? All the fish caught in your net is your fish. And you're responsible to take care of them. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I'm hearing you. You want me, you want me to say it again? All the fish caught in your net are yours. You can't catch the fish and forget all the minnows that's going with it. So some man come along and say he likes you, but he, he can't, can't, can't you put your children with somebody? You put him with somebody and keep going. Because all the fish taken in your net are yours. No need in getting married and not telling your wife all the truth. And then six months later, she's swole up and you're ready to tell her you couldn't have children. Be the proud daddy and shut up. <laughs> All the fish taken in your net is your fish. If you couldn't watch over things well enough, just thank God you got good neighbors. <laughs> Y'all laughing. But see, it used to be you had to have children or you could not go forward. Your name would end right then, right there. You couldn't have uncles and cousins be the ones that stand for you. You had to have children. And great kings in the days of England and, and your uh, European countries would do away with their wives if they couldn't have children. Off with a head. He had to have an heir. Since the church wouldn't let him remarry, they had no problem with him killing him. Well, you want the truth, don't you? The church didn't have no problem with him cutting off a head. But he had a problem with him remarrying. So he stayed within the line of the church. He cut a head off and remarried. Well, I know you learned this already in I know these youngsters did in school. All right, we're getting down into things. You can ask questions. We're going, I think we're going another 20, 25 minutes. Now, marriage is not something that can be dissolved by law. Write that in your notes. Unless you come in here and tell me how you've been going to the judge. The judge can't dissolve nothing but some sugar and some coffee. He cannot dissolve a marriage. He have not the power with God. For God is the one that joins folk together. And a man on earth cannot dissolve. I said in the church. We in the world, we do whatever we want to do. We do what we want to do in the world. 
shoot, you get a divorce and have the only dad in there. Say, now, they, now marry us. <laughs> In the world, in the world, you can get married and divorced in the same hour. And divorced and married in the same hour. But not with God. Save for the case of fornication. You can't have a marriage dissolved. And we're not talking about jaw fornication. We're talking, talking fornication. Caught fornication. And it's still then. Listen. We're talking about relationships. See, no way I could get around teaching it this way. Because he's dealing with marriage. But he doesn't know what he's dealing with. You understand what I'm saying? Save for the case the husband and wife decide they want the husband or the wife that have committed this act. They want them anyway and declare unto the pastor, I want them regardless, I'll forgive them. Then they can't come back later and say, I've changed my mind. Say, I, I wanted this no good new rubbish for her, so happen. I'll tell you right now. No, it won't work that way. Once you say that you don't, you do want them, that dissolves the sin. Both in heaven, both in heaven and in the church office. Any questions? Sister Poyam looking at me hard, boy. If you come up and say, I want him anyhow, I want her anyhow, you walk in and you catch them committing the act. And they somehow manage to get out of their life. <laughs> I better say it that way. Priscilla said, all right, now you're hitting it just right. <laughs> and they, they somehow managed to get away alive. And you think about it a day or two and say, I want John Henry back. Some women are that way. Some women want their man back regardless of what has transpired. And I'm, can I say this? Regardless of what the pastor say. Am I in the right church? I can tell you. Get away from that. As soon as you, mm -hmm, as soon as you get out there. He don't know what's best for me. I know what's best for me. John Henry is all I need. Am I talking about the right sheriff? And you know, I'm telling it like it is. You can get beat up, jumped on, leave an imprint in the wall where your head been put in there, and still want to stay with John Henry. That's right. I say, you come to Pastor, well, Pastor so and so, but I love him. No, you've been mentally led to lean on him to make yourself complete no woman is supposed to suffer that kind of abuse no woman is supposed to take beatings mental physical sometimes men say some terrible things and they think it's alright because they're a man if she walk off God's going to justify it I'm telling you brothers that and telling you sisters that. You abuse your mate with words, God will let the man or the woman walk off and justify. Are you listening? You're not married under any condition. I better put my glasses on my eyes too bad. I have to tell them I'm wearing glasses. Ain't got no glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Sister, how come you laughing the loudest? <laughs> we, we, am I making sense to you? Though? Now, once making a decision that you will accept what you know 
Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Are you listening? Whether it happened this year, two years ago, four years ago, if you accepted them, knowing what has gone down, don't come to me and tell me five years ago last Thursday. John Henry was out of line. I caught him. I'm going to tell you, good for you. Go home and fix his dinner. Because it's too late. You have already set the precedent by living with it. Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. If I hit Sister Queen in the nose and I live, and, and, still, and I can still walk and talk, I always tell her, if I see her here in front of the yard, I'm gone. <laughs> I know she's going out there looking for a stick. <laughs> if, she, if, if she allows me to stay with her after I hit in the nose, don't come bringing it up a year later. Every incident that happens has to be brought up at the time. It's the t I tell you something, brothers, it's wrong to cover the things that sisters do to you. And sisters, it's wrong for you to cover the things that brothers do to you. See, once you cover it, you know, don't come back and tell me what it's done. I don't want to hear it. You know, you've covered it for six months. You want to tell me, hey, I've been covering this. Keep on covering it. And Erica said, hmm. <laughs> You got to deal with things as they happen. Young women, if somebody's slamming you up against the wall, getting you in the collar now, don't marry them. Don't marry them. You got some more slamming and collar work coming. I'm going to change them. I understand, marriage does not change, folks, as people think it does. Now, it'll make a nice person, a nice person nicer, a good person better, but it's not going to make a wicked person sweet. Uh -uh, they want to fight you then. Anytime you want to do right around a wicked person, they want to get, they want to fight. They don't want to do good. They want to fight. Everybody looking at me all strange. Okay, I better move on. Say, Pastor, you've you been around there too, too enough now. Let's, let's go someplace else now. Any questions? Any questions? Marriage is eternal. You can't marry somebody and get out of it. I knew it was coming. Now you can't get out of it. <laughs> yes, Sister for you. Enough. I gotta catch it. See, Jesus said she was caught in the very act. See, sometimes women say stuff to get even. It's not really true. It's not. They'll say in a minute. I, well, anyway, I've been with Leroy. And Leroy, Leroy get hit in the nose over nothing. He don't know a thing that's happening. And many times, vice versa. But there is no change e Oh, no. You come in there and catch somebody. Y'all caught that? <laughs> <laughs> when you catch somebody, that's it. Now, now let, me, let me explain something to you. Uh, do I have your ears? You can't catch nobody unless God allow it. Stalk around, peek around, <laughs> set up cameras, 
you can't catch nobody <laughs> unless God allowed him to be caught. Hello. And if God doesn't allow it, you can't catch it. You say, I just know it. Well, I know it's going to rain on a cloudy day sometimes. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, Sister Boy? There first must be an eyewitness. Then you and the person doing it constitutes two. And the other one constitutes three. Out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, every word is established as far as God is concerned. You're not required to be a witness unto yourself. If a man or a woman go and tell their mate they committed adultery, they need to take two trips to Milledgeville before they do it. <laughs> they, need, they need some help. That's not something you go around telling folk. You know that wife, she go out and buy a pistol and put it under the, somewhere because she's scared of burglars and don't want to let you know. And you be the first one she tested on. Y'all laughing. <laughs> Y'all laughing. Free you full of holes. And threaten you on the ground. You better not be living. <laughs> no, you don't do that. Okay, let's read. Did I answer your question? Are you satisfied with the answer? Really? See, a, a, person is, a person is not required even with God to testify against himself or herself. A person come to her husband and say, I committed adultery, baby, I just want you to know. Then she needs help. Not only for the adultery, but for her mental condition. <laughs> she needs real help. Because he's going to have, what you say? <laughs> he, he, it feels good to be an adult. I'll talk to you later. Because you know he's going to say, well, what you just say? <laughs> Y'all laughing? It's been a many of folk that have lost their lives thinking they could talk to somebody. Are you listening to me? You ministers especially, you don't help nobody by telling somebody's business. There's a many a person that have lost their lives. Are you listening? Are you listening? Thinking they're doing something real spiritual. Oh, this is spiritual. This is spiritual. I'm going to get right with God. You're getting ready to go to him. And you know what God will call you? He'll call you a fool. He says, he told you, you're not supposed to tell those things done in the dark. That's right there in your Bible. Say, don't tell those things. See, and what I like about the teachers now, you're learning, and you're going to really learn when you go down to Savannah. You're learning how to dispense the word of God. Any one of you folks that think you can teach yourself, you got a fool for a teacher. Because God's not going to give you a thing. You're going to have to give it to yourself, and nine chances out of ten, you're going to be wrong. Just like how many were wrong about parts of this lesson this morning? If you, if you studied the lesson, how many wrong were parts of it? Let me see the hand. Look, at one, two, three, four. Wrong on parts of the lesson. And these are the teachers. You can't learn this stuff on your own. Are you, are you with me? What the devil will do, Sister Queen, are you listening? He'll have you dig and try to find out where I'm wrong so he can make you wrong. He knows you don't know anything. So he'll find you a scripture that you feel makes you right. He knows you don't know anything about spiritual condition. You caught it in. Did I just tell you something? Spiritual 
conditions. What does God go by? The Bible? No. I told you that before. That's other people's mail. He goes by spiritual conditions and what he plans to do under the operation of God for these conditions. If you cannot get to your pastor as a married person in trouble, shut your mouth and put a band-aid over until you do. If you can't keep it, how you expect your neighbor to keep it? Oh, I got to, I got to tell it. It's on my heart so heavy. It's not like that which is going to be on your nose two hours later. Keep your mouth shut. Am I telling you to hide something? Yes. Be wise as a serpent. Harmless as a dove. It's a fool to think he has to please God by telling everything he know. Let's get in the word. Any questions? Y'all about ready to throw me out? Any questions? When you are caught I, I, and in an uncompromising situation other than adultery, other than sex, there's nothing anybody can do but forgive each other. I don't want to leave him. No, that's not grounds to leave. Uh oh, so Pam said, wait, hold up, hold up. Back up, Pastor. Maybe I didn't hear you clearly. <laughs> if a man or woman is caught in an uncompromising situation, other than sex, that is not grounds to leave your husband or your wife. And when he comes to, <laughs> I said what I said. How many heard what I said? In an uncompromising position, other than sex, there's a lot of uncompromising positions that is not sex. There's nothing that can be done, period, except forgive and forget. Sister Poyo. Ooh, and you the she the assistant pastor. I hope you in the back didn't hear that. Some things are left silent. <laughs> you have to ask the folk in the front. <laughs> you know, you I'll say it again. You walk in on an uncompromising situation, other than sex, nothing you can do but forgive it. Are you hearing me? You can't take action against anything but sex. Everybody looking at me. Folks do. But they're, and they even separate and divorce. And remarry. But they got two husbands or two wives. As far as God concerned. Because nothing. Save for the case. Of fornication. Is that what Jesus said? Oh Lord. Pastor. Now she can leave. You can let her leave. She can say she don't want you. He can leave. You can let him leave. And he can say. He doesn't want you as long as he get to the pastor and say <coughs> that he doesn't want you or she doesn't want you. Then they're free. Husband and wife come in the office and say they don't want the wife or the husband. And I hear them say it. I'm going to call somebody else in. I'm going to call a deacon in or somebody say now. Tell it, say that in front of them. Case closed. They can be divorced. come together how would I know it to be the truth 
just cause the wife come and say, yeah, he said he don't want me no more. That mean I'm free? <laughs> that mean I'm free? Because he said he don't want me no more, Pastor? Am I free now? No, you have to come with you. If it's legit and not something said out of anger, if it's a legit emotional a, a, a thought that has been thought through, they're not afraid to come see the pastor. They're not afraid to see anybody and tell them how they feel. Other than that, it's an emotional state that changes from day to day. Today they don't want you, tomorrow they want you, today they don't want you, tomorrow they want you. Anybody been there? Don't touch me, touch me. Don't touch me, touch me. Am I in the right church? It's an emotional state. But if it's a state where they legitimately have thought it through and say, I'm holding her back and I'm holding myself back because there's no feelings here. I don't want this woman. Or she say, I don't want this man. And they agree to it. Then they're supposed to come see me. And I will hear it. And I may, I'll probably call a deacon in. And say, listen to this. And they'd say it in front of the deacon. Then I can dissolve the marriage on the spot. And they can do the paperwork with the lawyer. Later on. The marriage is dissolved on the spot. She got to get out. Or he got to get out. No, no, you can't say you don't want nobody and go home and go to bed. I'm tired talking to pastor. No, you can't stay there and go to bed. You got to go find you someplace else to go to bed. This ain't no game. Then the marriage is dissolved on the spot. God recognized. See, you don't care what civil authorities do. Can I help you a little bit? Civil authorities have nothing to do with God. Even though they're set up by God. God does not listen to civil authorities over spiritual matters. There is things he asked you to do. Uh, Brother Goggins read verses 11 through 15. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Or be reconciled to her husband. Reconciled. Reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. If a woman want to leave, let her go, but she can't never marry. You got to stay married to the man. This is a clear walking away. No adultery, fornication involved. I just don't like the way you smell. I'm gone. You like the way I smell, right? Okay. <laughs> well, it's a clear walking away. Sometimes women get tired of somebody and want to walk away. You all act like I'm in the wrong church saying the wrong thing. Not me, Pastor. Sometimes you get tired and want to walk away. Come on, can I, can I talk in here? Let's talk about women. They'll go get them an apartment, furnish it, <laughs> get everything set up, get everything the way they work, then met the landlord, paid the deposit, two months rent, and put a stick on the refrigerator. I saw this wasn't going to work. See you later, baby. Now, this is the way women do business. What y'all looking at me like I'm wrong? Am I right or wrong? No more words need be said. Hmm? They're afraid of the confrontation. So they just get up and go. Anybody listening? They get up and go. Praise the Lord. And so, if she gets up and go and, and she's saved, no, say, no, no, say, yeah, save or walk off too. She can never court, see, date, be with, hold hands with, kiss another man or woman. I have to change the doctrine for this new day. I knew it was coming. I just waited. Yes.
Yeah. If he, if you come in and say you don't want me, and I say I still want you, you can't get it. It's got to be an agreement. Well, you come in and say I want to get rid of my stay with me, baby. You got to stay. And 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 no putting lumps on folks' head to get them to go. Well, no, I know. I told you no accusations. No, no, forget accusations. No. No accusations. Accusations do not work with God. You have to have what? Two witnesses or more. Two witnesses or what? More. Without two witnesses, keep your mouth shut. No, let me explain something to you. You say something that you don't have nobody to back it up, you're in trouble, not the one that did it. Here, look me up and down, sister. Sister Doug gave me that woman whoop look. <laughs> Don't whoop me, sister Doug. Even if you know it's true, you in trouble if you talk about it and you don't have nobody to back it up. Well, everybody understand what I'm saying? If you say one word and there's nobody to back up what you're saying, you're guilty of false accusation. For word cannot be established without two. What part of this that you don't understand? Okay, this is one. Everybody see it? And this is two. Anybody see that? There must be two. And you must be caught in the act. And only love is crucial. Not secret love. You need help. You need to come see your pastor. You need to come to some of our special classes we're going to have. If you have secret love. Love that can't nobody find but you. I've heard people say I love them. And you don't see the response of that love anywhere. I don't love my wife because I buy her clothes. She can't tell that I love her because I buy her clothes and dishes. Provide a home. That's not what she goes by. I let her fuss as much as she wants. <laughs> That's your love, see. <laughs> Baby say, leave me alone. <laughs> and she lets me talk about her as much as I want. You begin to see? That's love. She doesn't go out in the car and fuss all the way home. <laughs> She stooped by the four-way stop sign up there. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. If you don't know, if you don't know that the one you love is hurting, you don't love him. Uh -uh. When you love somebody, you know when they are hurting. You know when they need encouragement. You know when they need help. If they've got to tell you, then you've missed something along the way. Are you listening to me? We're going to talk about this in the ministry class too. Your wife, your husband, you ought to feel whatever it is they're in need of. They shouldn't have to tell you. People I love, I'm able to tell them, I know you. I know, I know all about you. How do I know? Oh, the Lord tell you. No, I study you because I love you. I study your ups and your downs. I know what you can take and what you can't take. Are you listening to me? I know when you're hurting. And I know what hurts you. Come on, somebody. Come on. 
a man that loves a woman, a woman that loves a man. You don't, if calling him fat hurts him, why would you do it? Why would you do it? If he's overweight, you don't call him fat to hurt him because you're trying to win an argument. You don't say one word to hurt somebody because you're trying to win an argument. If you cannot win an argument without hurting that other individual, then you don't love that individual. You can't tell me, I, nobody can tell you that you don't love them. I'm trying to tell you you don't love them, you need to work on loving them. You can't talk about folk and love them. You can't talk about, you can't hurt folk and say you love them. Now I may hurt you with doctrine, telling you to do right, but that's because I love you. I didn't always tell folk to do right, it wasn't always my job. And I stay out your business when it wasn't my job. I stay out of your business. I wouldn't try to keep you from falling in a hole. I'd stay out your business. When it became my job, I got in your business. And, I, and everyone in this church can tell you, of the married folks that's married, say we have one widow. I will tell you, don't hurt that other person. Say, don't hurt them. Don't do it. If you can say anything to someone else about your husband or your wife, you need counsel. You can criticize your husband and your wife to some, you can tell me all you want to, I don't know them. You don't either. Because you can't say, you can't go to somebody else and tell them something evil about somebody you love. Am I giving you a lesson today? You don't go to anyone and tell them evil about somebody you love. If you young folks do that and you lose the love of a boyfriend and girlfriend, that's how you lost it. You had no business. Well, I just told it to my best friend, you could have put it in the newspaper. Gossip don't have no best friend. It's according to how hot it is. Isn't that right, Geraldine? Yes, all right, this is, I got to tell it. This is hot. Fresh off the press. <laughs> I got to tell it. We starting to understand something. Happiness is not taking my wife to dinner, though I take her to dinner. So, well, what? Not buying her clothes, though I buy her clothes, shoes. Do I buy your clothes, shoes? I try to get you whatever you want. Am I right or wrong? Within reason. Within reason. Let it be known. Within reason. Amen. That's not the say something. What says something is when I refuse to go do what I want to do when she's sick. When I want to go here or there and she's sick. I'm not going to go to work. I'm not going to do anything unless she allows me the privilege to leave her side. I'm going to stay there till she say, till she want to get rid of me. Not so much as a healing agent, though God hears my prayers. How can she know that I love her unless I'm there? No, it doesn't have to do, brothers and sisters, with your weights. It doesn't have anything to do with your quirks and fetishes. People are never perfect. If you're looking for a perfect person, you're in the wrong world just yet. And if you're looking for a man or woman to be perfect, you might as well be satisfied being single and ask God to give you a spirit to help you be single. Because sometimes we let our nose run. Ain't that right, Chabonet? See, we're here checking our nose. <laughs> She's a sweetheart. Boy, I'm down here. Chabonet say.
Nobody is perfect. No one. And I'm not speaking in the sense of walking with God. I'm speaking of the sense of living every day in this world. If you're looking for a perfect person, you will never find them. If you're looking for the perfect saint, you will never find them. There's going to be fetishes. Shortcomings. Don't fool yourself. I found just who I wanted. You better look a little harder. Not that I would put anything against someone's good name. But there's no perfect situation. None. I, 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 I have a rule in my house that my wife ardently, ardently obeys that most of you would quit. And y'all, I know you'd quit. My wife has to get up and be dressed and look good at 630 in the morning. Am I right or wrong? I don't know who's going to come to my house. And for what? So she has to always be prepared for who comes. That's a pastor's wife. Now, you don't have to do that. You're not a pastor's wife. You can walk around in your moo-moo and mama, whatever it is, all day. But she has to greet no matter who comes to my home. And I have folk coming at early hours. And she has to greet them. The only time she's excused is when she's sick. And I don't put no pressure on her when she's sick. No. But when she's in full operation, she knows what I'm looking for. A lot of y'all wouldn't do that. Honey, I work hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially you that work midnights. Ain't the way in the world. I'm getting up no sick day. I just got home. Well, shoot, you don't have to change clothes. You can stay up to date. <laughs> Are we learning something? So you think that maybe Sister Poem has it easy, but I have rules I have to go by. And she has rules that she has to go by. And love provokes you to do. Tell your neighbor, love provokes you to do. Love provokes you to do. Say it again. Does love provoke you to do? Amen. You can, if you don't feel like doing something for your wife or your husband, something wrong. I have to stop my wife from buying me stuff. She will come back with two shirts, ties, socks, all kind of stuff. And I don't ask for it. She just brings it back. I thought, I think this will look good on you. I think this, yeah, that'll look good on you. I look in the mirror and see the same old Delbert. I say, that looked like Delbert to me. No, but it looked good on you. She know how to get way down in your pockets, boy. She know what to say to get way down in there. She said, I did see a pair of shoes while I was over there. <laughs> Are we waking up? You're supposed to enjoy your relationship, not hate it. If you're constantly looking at your mate's faults, you can't enjoy your relationship. Amen. And mates, you got to do enough right so they don't have to look at your faults. Amen. Don't make your wife suspicious. Hear all the whispering going on. <laughs> Don't make your wife suspicious. And ain't no drugstore two days away. I went to the drugstore. The nearest one that had what I wanted was down in Spalding County. We, we can't do that. We can't do that. Don't answer your cell phone. I, I was busy. I was busy. You got to answer your cell phone. You see your wife calling you. Find out what she want. What you want, baby? Is it? Somebody say something. Don't call you at 9.30. On Wednesday night. 
Okay, she she knows you here. One thing she know, if she call, you there. <laughs> Right at the shelf. Say, hey, if I call and you answer, I know you're there. <laughs> so we had that part down pat. <laughs> Amen. We learn in our way. Confidence is the number one thing in any relationship. You must have confidence with the one you're in the relationship with. And I'm going to tell you something that really is going to shock you. It don't matter about nobody else. Next time. Next time, you hear me? Okay, all our single folk that want to get married, come on up here. Uh, brother, brother, you, you don't jump up so quick next time. <laughs> <laughs> Pam said. <laughs> <laughs> 